to keep the scheme going. Plus, some investors in the scheme found themselves in need of cash when the economy turned. It was when they tried to take their money out of Madoff's supposed funds uh, that, that it all fell apart. The money wasn't there. In retrospect, the warning signs are like red neon on a dark night. Even as Bernie Madoff was known to be managing billions of dollars and paying out 12% annually to all his investors, there were no signs anywhere in the market that he was actually trading anything with anyone in order to make anyone any money. If he were trading what he said he was trading, there weren't in existence enough of those things to explain where all his money and all his market activity was going. As the market went up and down and bubbled and crashed, Madoff's returns stayed supernaturally steady. The fake returns he generated about his supposed performance in the market showed him to be a batter with a 960 batting average year after year after year after year. And nobody said this is too good to be true. Nobody caught him. $65 billion, a total 100% fraud that went on for decades. And nobody caught him. He just blew up on his own. Inspires confidence, right? Why would anybody invest in the United States if this is the kind of policing that we do against theft, fraud, even the most basic con artist schemes that have been around for generations? The interview tonight is with the man who figured out Madoff's scheme 10 years ago, who went to the SEC five separate times with the evidence of what Mr. Madoff was doing, only to be ignored by the people who were supposed to be watching all of our backs. He is Harry Markopoulos, the Madoff whistleblower. His book, No One Would Listen, is out today. Mr. Markopoulos, thanks very much for being here. Good to be here. Um, is that right that nobody got him? He, it just blew up of his own accord, right? Natural causes. <sighs> You were working in the financial industry in 2000. Your own firm uh, asked you essentially to try to compete with the returns that Bernie Madoff was giving. When you looked at what he was doing, what was the tip off to you that something was wrong? The chart that went up at a 45 degree angle of his performance without variation, the markets go up and down, he only went up. And so that was not exactly high level math, it was just this is too good to be true. Impossible, clearly impossible. I can understand how individual investors, individual families, could get hoodwinked by the sort of foul, the false statements, the false paperwork that he put out, uh, the other things that Madoff did to make himself seem legit. But how did Wall Street firms get get hooked? I mean, funds investing billions of dollars with him, and they never checked his math. They were never suspicious the way you were. I'd say the Wall Street, the big firms on Wall Street knew something was wrong and walked away. It was all the other firms around the globe that rushed in, especially the Europeans. Okay. The Europeans came in in large numbers. There were probably more Europeans in here, I suspect, than Americans, actually. So in terms of the people who did versus didn't get involved with Madoff, obviously somebody's offering 12% return year after year after year. You'd think that everybody would put their money with them. But you're, you think that some firms did due diligence, realized that Madoff was not legit, and stayed away. But still, they didn't blow the whistle. They didn't tell anybody. That's, when you live in a glass house, you don't throw stones, and self-regulation doesn't work. And I think this case proved it. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people knew, and no one reported it to the SEC except my team and maybe two or three other whistleblowers. That was it. Weren't those other firms, though, also competing with Madoff? Wouldn't they have had a reason to try to get him off the, out of the market? I'm sure that all of them lost business to Madoff. I know all the firms in Boston lost customers to Madoff, because how can you compete against somebody with perfect returns? So... But still, though, there's that issue of the incentive. I mean, I guess you don't really want to be seen as somebody who's a snitch if you're also getting away with stuff that you don't want to get caught for. But you would think that they, if he's controlling tens of billions of dollars, you'd think that a firm like Goldman Sachs or somebody else would want him off, want him off the table. I wanted him off the table. You would think that the other firms did, but I guess I was the only one that thought like that. It does seem damning um, that Madoff got audited every year. This is one of the things that I thought about before I read your book. Um, and he did, you, you describe him as sort of shopping around for auditors, right? And that was his largest feeder fund, Fairfield Greenwich. They used three different auditors from three different countries, three different years. That's a glaring red flag. They controlled about seven and a half billion that they sent into the Madoff complex. Glaring, glaring red flag. And so they're shopping around for auditors that are going to give them a clean bill of health. But indeed, they find name brand auditors who give them a clean bill of health, just like Enron did, just like Tyco did, just like all of these firms that collapsed under fraud did. The securities that they were auditing, they didn't, never existed. All they had to do was make a phone call and find out who did Manoff buy these securities from on behalf of Fairfield Greenwich. No one ever made those calls, apparently. In terms of what we look to the financial industry and Wall Street and the big accounting firms for, we expect that they're uh, small c conservative, that they're doing due diligence, they're following the math, they're making sure that everything 
checks out. Um, their incentive to not do it is just because it's easier to get, a, to get paid for not doing the work? It just seems like a lot of people got paid a lot of money and no one did the proper work. No one asked any questions of Madoff. No one did any due diligence questions on a, on a normal checklist. I don't know how he got away with it. And it wasn't only the accounting firms. It was big banks. It was custodian banks. It was third-party plan administrators that were clearing the trades and saying that Madoff, sure, these trades are legit. This is how we keep his performance. There were no trades, though. So what were the plan administrators doing? I still don't know. Well, they were getting paid, as you document, they were getting paid giant fees by Bernie. From, they, were getting, they were getting giant fees from Bernie Madoff to keep shoveling, them, shoveling money to him without asking questions. Everybody got paid a lot of money. He paid over 90% of the total fees in the scheme to the people that weren't asking questions of those feeder funds. Yeah, and the people who were asking questions, like you, got ignored. Um, you sort of tried unsuccessfully to be the Madoff whistleblower in time. What you've ended up being is the SEC whistleblower, right? I mean, you're exposing how badly we need good regulators on Wall Street, how, what a joke it is to have self-regulation, but also how lame our current regulators are. How seriously do you feel like those concerns are being taken now? None. No one's been fired at any of the banking regulators for ignoring the banking crisis before it was happening, yeah. before it unfolded. The SEC, no one's been held accountable. No one's been fired. People only get promoted at these agencies, and that's, that's the tragedy. Is, are we doing anything any better now than we were when you were being ignored by the SEC for eight years? Yes, the SEC is turning itself around as quickly as it can. I mean, it's re-disorganized itself. It's <laughs> taking Ponzi schemes seriously. They moved them up to the top of the priority list from the bottom. They're going after Ponzi schemes aggressively. They're sending people for training, but they have the wrong staff. They have way too many lawyers. They don't have enough people that understand finance. You're a quantitative guy. You're a guy who's a math guy, a numbers guy. Those folks are not generally involved in, regu in, in the regulatory agencies now. Is that what you're saying? But they need to be. Yeah. They need to be brought on board. They need to be compensated correctly, and they need to be incentivized. You're a full-time fraud investigator now. Full-time. Um, it doesn't. One of the things that's interesting about your sort of personal story here is that doing that doesn't work as a career unless there are cops who you can turn in the robbers to, right? You can, it's one thing to expose the fraud and put together the case, but if nobody responds once you bring it to the authorities' attention, you're not getting anywhere as a fraud investigator. H have you ever thought about, instead of doing what you're doing, going to work for the government to show them how it's done? I do indirectly. I do give my cases to some state attorney generals who do act on them. Jerry Brown has one of my cases. His pension fund in California, tens of millions, millions of his pensioners have been defrauded by a bank, State Street, in a foreign currency fraud. Mm -hmm. And I turned that one in, and he's acting on it. I'm hoping other people will act similarly. Uh, tens of billions of pension assets are being stolen. I think the states do act. The federal government, the SEC, needs to wake up, smell the coffee. Well, the book will probably help, at least uh, uh, if it does its job. Harry Markopoulos, um, thank you for uh, everything you tried to do and for what you're still trying to do, and thanks for making time to talk to us. appreciate it. Great being here. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. As you know, the United States Senate is where policy goes to die. It's like a roach motel. Things go in, but they never come out. Republicans have made it a policy to filibuster absolutely everything in the Senate. Miraculously, though, Senate Republicans recently decided to join with Democrats to extend unemployment benefits. But before hell even had a chance to freeze over, before a single icicle formed, Senator Jim Bunning decided that that was way too reasonable. Senator Bunning put a one-man kibosh on the jobless aid bill, personally stopping unemployment benefits to 400,000 people who would otherwise be getting them. And there will be more the longer Bunning holds out. Bunning's action also forced the furlough of 2,000 Department of Transportation workers. He brought millions of dollars worth of highway and bridge projects to a screeching halt. He cut Medicare reimbursement reimbursements to doctors by more than 20 percent, and he even threatened the TV signals of a half million people living in rural areas who receive broadcast channels through a special government deal with satellite TV companies. And even though furloughed federal transportation workers and doctors who treat senior citizens on Medicare and Americans who'll, who will lose their local TV signals and their unemployment benefits have reasons to be peeved with Senator Bunning, it is Senator Bunning who is angry. He's angry about all the media attention he's getting for doing this, and he's angry about his right to ride alone in a very special elevator. Excuse me, this is a senator-only elevator. Can I come on the elevator? No, you may not. Can you tell us why you're blocking this vote? Uh, I already Please. did. Explained it. Well, what, what is the issue? And, and are you concerned about Excuse these people me. who are unemployed? I've got to go to the floor. Senator, can you just explain to us why you're holding this up? I'm sure you have an explanation. Excuse me. Okay, are, are you concerned about those that, that, that are going to lose their benefits? 
Later, when an ABC News producer tried again to talk with Senator Bunning, he flipped him the gesture involving a finger that is not the thumb, not the forefinger, not the ring finger, or the pinky finger. Senator Bunning's gesture was returned today in a more metaphorical way by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who is reportedly planning to get around Senator Bunning by reintroducing this measure in a way that Bunning procedurally cannot derail. Stay tuned on that one. Next up, one of the most conservative Democrats in the Senate, Arkansas's Blanche Lincoln, is up for re-election this year. It's a prospect which has led her to be even more ostentatiously conservative than usual recently. That's a tried and true conservadem strategy, since Democrats are conditioned to believe that their only competition is with Republicans and they never have to worry about an angry base in their own party. Blanche Lincoln took that assumption to the breaking point and beyond in this past year when she crusaded against the public option in health reform, despite polls showing how much Arkansans liked it.